Well, good morning all. Another early start. I've got a bit of a broken day today, so I thought I'd get up early and try and get the task done. And today's job is to get the outdoor tomatoes planted into this bed. So yesterday we had some more rain again. The soil's lovely and moist. Ideal planting out with her. So let's get going. Those of you that watch the channel on a regular basis, you'll be no surprise that I'm growing my old favourite, the Crimson Crush. There'll be 12 plants all together in this bed. And the Crimson Crush, I think it's the fourth or fifth year that I've grown this, because it is my favourite flavour for the large tomatoes. About four years ago, I did a taste test amongst other blight-resistant tomatoes. There was Furloin and uh, Mountain Magic and this come out on top. Not a lot, but it did. And there's more and more blight-resistant tomatoes coming out now. I've got another variety, a new one on me. It's called Soderno. So I'm going to be putting four of these in the line and a row of four of Crimson Crush each side, and we'll see how they do at the end of the season. These are pot-bound in here. They've been in here far too long. The leaves are starting to yellow, probably hunger. And also, you can see on here, there's trusses on already, which means them desperate to go out. They have been hardened off. They've been in the garden outside for oh, at least two to three weeks, so they should be all right. So I'm going to get them in right now. In each planting owl, I'm going to be adding a bit of fish blood and bone. Leave that a mix around the loose bottom. Now, because I've let these go a bit leggy, I'm going to be planting them like the norm, a bit deeper than usual. As you can see, it's got a decent root ball on there. And I've got me mycorrhizal fungi. Give them a little dusting. Let me just pop it in the hole. That's the uh, first four plants in. I'd actually only got three, so do now. I remember now, a few weeks back, I was moving the tomatoes. One top holder grabbed it and he snapped it off at the stem, so it must have been one of the Sedernos. Not to worry, I've popped another crimson in the bottom. You'll also notice I've put the canes in as well, and uh, I always put the canes behind the plant because the sun is that way, and the plants tend to lean forward, so it's easy to tie them back. But do make sure that the canes are in firmly, because when the tomatoes have got trusses on, they do carry a fair bit of weight. Now that the plants are in and we've got the canes in, do remember to tie them in because it'd be so tragic if we had a strong gust of wind and it snapped off and all that hard work's gone. I tend to use a soft twine in a figure of eight round the cane, but you can actually use whatever method you prefer. I do the knot loose, which allows the plant to grow. And that's all there is to it. All that's left now is to give them a water and bed them in. The gaps between the rows of plants, I plant my beetroot in there and they seem to do quite well. I don't know whether it's the environment, the shade or what, but I'll give it a few weeks, let these settle in and then I'll be planting those in. Morning all, welcome back. Yet another early start. The object for today is to plant these out, the onions. Uh, could have done with going out a bit earlier, really. They're starting to bulb up, but not to worry. 
I'm just having a look at the area around here and soil preparation I've more or less done what I want to do. I tend to follow the method by Robinson's, the home of the giant mammoth onion. And uh, if you go on their website, they do a detailed description how they prepare their onion bed. They've been growing for over 150 years in the same area, so if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. I'll put a link underneath there, and if you want to take a closer look, go and have a look. Um, Weather-wise, it's a bit cool at the moment, but hopefully, looking on the forecast, we mean for a hot day. Hopefully we'll be able to get into some shorts and t-shirts a bit later on. In the meantime, my onion bed here is just a little bit on the low side, but fortunately I've got some spent compost in the greenhouse behind and I'm going to put that on the top and just tittle it in with the hoe before we start planting out. Understandably, these beds have been ready now for a few weeks. We've got quite a few surface annual weeds on, but I've just tittled across the top of the hoe, that's taken them off. And what I'm going to do now is I've got a three or four bags of this spent compost. I'm just going to put this into here and actually tittle it into the top. Some nice vermiculite in there, which will do the bed good. Perlite as well. Talking of compost, a fellow YouTuber and a friend of mine, Tony O'Neill, from Simplify Gardening, has recently released his book on the compost masterclass. Unfortunately, all the hard work and preparation went into it. Didn't pay fruition because uh, there was a bit of a mix-up regarding the publishers at Amazon, and it wasn't released on the time and date it should have been from Amazon, I think it was. Quite a few YouTubers have done books, but on this one, this is a bit uh, different in that he's done it as a paperback, hardback, also an e-book and an audio book as well, so it's in four formats. Put a picture up here, and uh, if I can find a link, I'll put it underneath in the show notes as well. Well, that has topped that bed up quite nicely. There's more compost there than I actually imagined, but I'm not complaining. As you can see, there's lots of perlite in there, which will be very good for the drainage. There's quite a selection of the larger onions, as you probably see from the back. There's a mixture of uh, Robinson's Mammoth, uh, Mammoth Red, Kelsey, some rows of Roscoff as well. And I've got a few smaller ones like Tough Ball, Vento, and I think these are at the front are the uh, Zabrun and Long Red Florence. So I'm going to be planting the, say, the larger ones out first, and we'll have a look how we get on once I've got the first row in. These are the calcium onions. These are going to be the first to go in. I'm going to put about 12 in, two rows of six, and. That's the quality of them at the moment. Bear in mind, these are not show onions, quality onions or heavy onions. These are purely for eating. So that's a decent size. Although the foliage is a bit pale, I'm 100% sure that's down to lack of nutrients. But once they get into the beds, I'm sure they'll perk up. So let's get going. I like to remove any loose skins or anything because after all they'll only rot once they're in the ground. And uh, the other thing I do, mouse plantings out, except brassicas, add mycorrhizal. Some people question the use of mycorrhizal when you're planting out into the garden because 
in theory the soil in here should contain enough nutrients to support the plant from now on but it's something I've always done and never had no problems with it. That's six rows of what I'll call my main big onions are in now. Or maybe around to here. These in here a variety called rows of Roscoff, or you might know them as Pink Caravel. I've grown these from seed, but as a trial, I've also got some in here. They've bought us, bought some sets and popped them in there. So I'm going to just grow them together and see how they compare and which one performs at the end of the season. Well, the temperature's rising on the old thermometer. It's called for a change of attire. Uh, with these Roscoff onions, I've changed the spacing slightly, be close together, instead of six, there's eight in a row now. And uh, they shouldn't be grow quite as big as the Kelsey or the Mammoth. Regardless of that though, when you're planting onions, don't be scared to firm them in, because come the longest day, these will start to bulb up very, very rapidly and they can push themselves out. So make sure the soil is firm and give them a good chance. That's the first bed done. The compost that I put on the top was quite dry, so I thought I'd just water it in and uh, help bed it down. I've also watered the tomato bed. Considering these have only been in two or three days, the uh, noticeable how much greener the foliage has gone now they've got the roots down. And hopefully the same will happen to this. Regarding feeding, I'm going to give these probably a comfrey feed in the next day or two to help boost them up. I do feed nitrogen very early on in the season in the beds, but for these now, they'll get more potash feed because if you feed too much nitrogen now, all they'll do is put, produce lots of leaf. Well, we just had to run for cover because we got hit with a tremendous downpour. Not that I'm complaining though, it's uh, washed all these in, so as we have to water it. But I think that's put pay for today's session. It's gone dark now, it's dropped a bit cold, the temperature has, and tonight we've got rain forecast coming in. For um, any steam rail locomotive fans out there, we got treated yesterday to a, a few seconds passing along the bottom line there of the I-4 loco to Nigel Grizzly. It's not that one, that's the main line one. <laughs> but actually come by in steam and I was able to grab a few seconds on my phone. I'll just put that clip in now. marvellous sight that was, considering that engine's 80, 90 years old. I think it was 1959 it broke the speed record of about 113, 115 mile an hour with a carriage full of people as well. So, <laughs> Anyway, back to this. As I say, don't look as though we could be doing any more today. But I'm happy with the way what we've got at the moment. And all that's left to get into this section here is these uh, Zabrun as well, so that I think they'll fit in nicely. And the section on the end there, I've got to tidy that up and we'll be putting the legs in there. I've got my crib sheet here, I'll just tell you what we've actually planted today. We've got uh, two rows, six in the row of Kelsey. Then along there we've got a six in the row of Robinson's Mammoth. Then the next six plants there, we've got four Mammoth and two Mammoth Red on the end. Then the next two rows, we got two lots of six of red mammoth again. And then as I said, we moved the spacings a little bit closer. We moved them up to eight in the row. And we've got uh, three rows of eight of the pink caravel. And moving on to here, even closer because the onions are smaller. We've got a row of 12 of tough ball. 
Then the next row of 12, we got to tough ball again. The next row of 12, we got six tough ball, then six vento. Then the next row, we got eight vento. And I've popped a few odd little pink caravel sets in, not very big, but they should be okay. And again, these are pink caravel sets in there. So that about wraps it up. Uh, tomorrow, the weather looks good, but I'm not on in this, working on it at the moment. Um, weather permitting, I'm visiting another allotment down to my mate, Nick, over in, uh, I think it's uh, just outside Stratford he is. And as I say, weather permitting, we'll be putting a new cover on this big polytunnel. Morning folks and welcome back. You join me on the final leg of planting out the allium bed. And uh, these are the zebrune and longer red fronds that are going out now. It's a bit strange weather again today. It's a bit too cool for short to start with. A bit too warm for a top, but if you don't, it'll be cold. So a uh, bit of a contrast from yesterday. I spent the day just outside Stratford, I mean, mate's allotment, Nick's allotment. And uh, together with Nick and a couple of his mates, we managed to put a new cover on the top of his, uh, his poly tunnel. And I must say, it looked a neat job after it finished. So uh, I'm sure he'll be putting a video up soon showing how we did it. Anyway, we've got rain forecast coming in today, so I want to try and get this sorted before that arrives and that's that to be put to bed now for the onions. The only thing left then is to sort out the leeks, but that's just a matter of bodging a few owls and throwing them in. So I'm going to call it a day for this one. You say if you want to have a look at more detail how I do my onions, I've got a detail list in the Grow My Days that you see, this is grown onions from seed. I'll put a picture up either there or there, I'll show you which way it'll come. But uh, if you want to have a look, take a look and uh, any questions, pop it in the comments. So until next time, see you later. Bye for now.